Boric, you're a six gold player and an international polo star. Welcome to Soda Grande. Ah, thank you very much, Claudia. Actually, it's the fourth time we've been back in a row. Actually, fourth year in a row we've been back here, and it's a, a pleasure. It's the centre of the world polo scene for the month of August, and by far the best place to come and play. Do you know, I just remembered I spoke to you when uh, three years ago, two, no, two years ago, and uh, you had a, a press do just introducing Royal Salute back into the polo world down here. Um, you didn't do that great that year. You're doing a lot better this year, aren't you? I remember that well, Claudia. I think I was trying to teach you to play polo, and uh, it, it, it came with mixed results. Um, no, that year was very tough. We were playing the high goals series here as a first time team in the high goal and uh, yeah like everything when you're a new team it, it takes a bit of getting used to but this year fortunately has been a lot more successful for the team so we're, we're very proud of what we've achieved. You can be you've won the um, medium goal silver cup correct and we've just played in the finals as well uh, so uh, that was a good result for you too congratulations 12-11 against Yagara Yep. Yeah, no, uh, the, winning the Silver Cup, uh, the first 15 days of August they played that Silver Cup and that was a, a great achievement for the team. And then just today we won the Constellation Prize, we got knocked out in the, in the elimination stage of the, of the Gold Cup series uh, during the second 15 days of August, but we won the Constellation, which like every game, you go to win and you go to try and do the best you can and we're pleased with the result today. It's the taking part that counts, isn't it? No, it's the winning. Claudia. It's Professional the winning. Sports it's the, the winning. winning, now we know. Um, Malcolm, you play internationally, um, you uh, play here, obviously we know you from here, we, you play in Argentina. Yep, we have a circuit that goes between, uh, on a year on year basis, starting in January, we start in Palm Beach and then we go to England for May, June, July, Soda Grande in August and then September, October, November down to Argentina. In between that, Royal Salute actually have a polo platform that operates in 14 countries around the world and I'm very lucky as their global brand ambassador to go and play in places like Malaysia, Korea that I'm going to next week. Um, it's part of our, our ethos of the brand of Royal Salute to try and spread the word of polo around and transmit obviously the message that our whiskey is fantastic. So you're a proper polo rock star then? I don't know about the rock star, my singing is not good. <laughs> the importance of the team, you're four players and you are, you are covering with your horses an awful lot of ground. How important is A, your relationship with your horse horses and then obviously what happens amongst the players? Yeah, oh, they always say, well, you know, what's the value, what's the percentage of the horses compared to what the contribution of the athlete on top is? And I would say it's 80% horse and 20% uh, player. If you can't get to the play, then it doesn't matter how good you are, you're not going to be able to do it. So uh, we're hugely uh, focused on our relationship with our horses, always trying to find better horses, work with what we've got, improve them, look after them to the best degree possible. We have a great team behind us that are always looking after the horses. It's 24-7 for them, they don't get a break. The horses have been in work. Today actually is the final day of the season and they've been in work since the 6th of March. So these horses have earned a, a well-earned rest. Um, but no, the, the relationship with you have with your, that you have with your teammates, like any team sport, um, it, it is the difference between success and failure. You can be the best player in the world and play on your own against a very good team you will lose. You have to be able to find the best out of your teammates to make the team work as, as better as a unit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so obviously that must count for choosing the right horses for you to work with as well, those uh, kind of characters. Yeah, we're, we're all in a race around the world, all polo players are looking for the same thing. You know, The horse that we're standing right next to now actually is, is a prime example of a horse that any 10 or 9 gold player would love to get their hands on. Unfortunately I got hold of it before they did. Um, What's his name? It's called Candy. She's called Candy. She's a thoroughbred from Candy. Argentina. She's a beautiful, beautiful horse. Um, but we all have special horses, and we we are all year round looking for horses and trying to improve what we've got in our stables and trying to bring on young ones to make them to fill the gaps. Now you're a bit of a tough nut on the field, but uh, you've got a big uh, soft heart because you're supporting charity as well. Now um, googling you, <laughs> um, I've seen you. Uh, support um, Centre Ballet with Prince William. You've played with Prince Harry. Now, what's it like to play with the boys? Uh, we're very, very lucky. I, uh, what Royal Salute does, as a lot of corporates do, um, a big part of their ethos is a bit of a philanthropical uh, give back I think and uh, what Royal Salute does is it combines events with Prince William and Prince Harry to support the Prince's charities. The Princes only play polo, the Duke of Cambridge and Prince Harry only play polo to raise money for their foundations. They're very strict about that um, and they raise phenomenal amounts of money all, all over the year and I've been very fortunate to help the boys uh, raise some money for, the, for their charities and we're going to be doing the same thing for the Royal Salute Centre Bali Cup now in September down in South Africa. I'm sorry, in November, down in November, down in South Africa. So we're looking forward to that. Um, but no, it's a, it's a privilege to play um, uh, with the boys and against them, and they're very, very good polo players. So um, hopefully they'll carry on playing, and hopefully they'll keep raising some money, some great causes. Who's the bigger go-getter? 
between the two of them? They're very different players. Um, both really? Prince Harry and Prince William, or the Duke of Cambridge, are very good quality players in their own right. And given the chance to play more, they would be, uh, I think, amongst the professional ranks of players. Um, they both have different personas on and off the field, and that gets reflected in how they play. But you know, we're very lucky, very lucky to have them playing, and I hope that they, uh, they continue to use Pilots to raise money for their charitable causes. Indeed. Um, I've got to ask you, uh, you know, preparing yourself for um, any polo game, but uh, particularly a final, what do you go through mentally in order to be the, in the strongest shape possible? Well, it's, your preparation in the last day, in the last couple of hours, is, is fairly routine. We do it for every game. You try and get yourself into a frame of mind that's focusing on what you're doing. The build-up is so long to get to those events, it's not by accident that suddenly you just get to a final. It's all the day in, day out, the training, the practice, the healthy eating, healthy living as much as we can. Obviously, you know, in Soda Grande it's a beautiful place to go out for dinner, a beautiful place to go out at night time. By the end of the month it's tricky. It's tricky, yeah, it's tricky to, to still feel healthy uh, and keep going. But, you know, we've managed to get to the end of the month and hopefully uh, everyone is in one piece. Mm -hmm. What do you do for cross-training? We do a bit of everything really. Actually here it's all about recuperation. Fortunately the sea is really cold so we go swimming quite a lot in the mornings. Um, it's great, it's the best way of regenerating your body. So we, you know, we do a bit of that and um, all the really hard work gets done May, April, uh, January, February, March pre-season in Palm Beach we do a lot of work there. Argentina we do a lot of maintenance. To be honest during the flat out season here you might play the odd game of tennis or a bit of this just to keep you moving but actually it's more, more, more about riding. I, I'm a big fan of riding as much as I can to keep the legs right and that's, that's what we try and do. And of course when you are here it is just incredibly hot during uh, July and August. I mean we've had <laughs> late 30s, early 40s almost. How do you manage, how do you stomach a game of polo in heat like that? I suppose you, you adapt quite quickly, you know, we started the month and it was in a heat wave and it was a real shock to the system coming from England, but uh, you know, in a couple of days you get used to it and the horses actually really thrive in it. We work them early in the morning and late in the evening and then the games are in a beautiful temperature like today, in you know, 26, 27 degrees, I mean really it couldn't be better. It's a fabulous spot to come, both the people to come watch polo. During the Silver Cup here I think the Royal Salute team played the final of the Silver Cup and there must have been 2,000 people watching the game which is really hard to find around the world. So there's a great fan base for polo here, um, and the facilities that Santa Maria Polo Club have put on are, are, are world class. Now the one thing that strikes me here, which is the cutest thing on earth, last time when you were presented uh, with the uh, Silver Cup, you had the most gorgeous little blondie on your arm, and um, it's definitely a family thing. Is it more than anywhere else? Well, I think because we travel as, as independent units around the world, you have a very close family relationship. We don't go to an office and not see our children from morning till dusk. We live you know, in the stables, back at home for lunch, back to the stables in the afternoon. The children are with us the whole time. So I think we're very fortunate. It's a very family-based uh, very family based sport. So um, fortunately, my children are having an amazing time. They probably won't remember it when they're grown up, but at the moment, they're having a lovely time traveling around the world and seeing all sorts of places. So uh, we're very grateful for it. I can imagine that that's quite important because if you have to perform, um, you know, you, you can't do this all on your own, literally. It is important to have um, the support of the family uh, in the background. Any professional sports career will have ups and downs um, and I think you have to be able to ride those waves and having stability at home and somebody who supports you and knows what you're going through and understands the, uh, the, the peaks and troughs that you might have and you have to take the two, treat those two imposters just the same. You can't get carried away with a great day and then get really depressed with a bad day. You have to treat it the, to do the best you can over the, over the space of each year. Um, so no, I'm very fortunate. I've got a loving wife who looks after me and looks after my children very well so I'm very grateful for all her support. <laughs> now then, with your dashing good looks, and all those fantastic pictures <laughs> on Google. Um, you could pass in one of those black and white shots, you could pass as a side to 007, I mean, <laughs> you know, somewhere in London. I wonder, has Barbara Broccoli called you at all? Uh, I, I must have missed the call. She must have my number <laughs> wrong somewhere, Claudia. That's very sweet of you, and I'm scared that you're Googling me. Um, but uh, no, Claudia, listen, the Photoshop's a remarkable thing, and it, it, it dresses us up an awful lot better than we are. Um, but no. So far, uh, so far, I'll just stick to playing polo and working with the likes of exactly. you. Exactly. So that will be the future for you, all the way until uh, the end. We're all the way till the end. Hopefully, hopefully, we've got other things coming. We've got lots of other brands that are coming involved in polo. Piaget is a, a new brand that's really starting to get involved in polo that I work closely with as well. So we're really looking to expand, uh, get some more corporates into investing in, in polo as a marketing vehicle and as an entertainment vehicle for their for their clients. So we're grateful for the opportunities that these beautiful organisations put on for us to be able to present other other opportunities for companies to come into. Polo. Well, Michael, it's been an absolute pleasure watching you guys, watching Walter you play, watching you play, and leading them. Um, here's to many years to come. I hope Thank so you very too. Much for I, to I hope we'll be here for many years to come too, Claudia. Thank you.